Hammer, arguably the strongest melee weapon in the game. It has some of the highest motion values per second combos, built-in CC through KOs, and low recovery animations with decent mobility. All of this and more make it excel both at hit and run play as well as sustained combo damage. But how do you maximize the damage on your hammer? Well, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And, and we're the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math guys. guys. And this is Monster Hunter Meta Hammer Builds. This time we'll be covering why Max Might is meta on hammer even though you use stamina, the meta hammer builds, and explain why Slugger isn't useful on hammer outside of a few niche situations. And yes, these builds are for console and PC. The console sets haven't improved since Behemoth came out. So we know you want to see the builds, but it is important to discuss why Max Might is meta because it will be in all of these builds. So yes, Hammer does use stamina while charging your charge attacks, however the consumption rate is extremely low. So low in fact that if you charge to level 1 and release, your stamina will be 100% again by the time your swing connects. And as for the level 3 standing charge attack, your brutal big bang, if you release it close to immediately, all of your hits still get max might. And for the third big hit, the one you actually care about for damage's sake, unless you hold your charge for around 7 seconds after reaching level 3, you will still get max might on the final hit. The only times you're really concerned about Max Might uptime is on the level 2 Charge Brutal upswing, but even with this attack, if you land with the second half of the swing, the high reaching portion of it, you still get Max Might. The only time you risk not getting Max Might is after a roll. If you roll and do a level 1 charge hit, depending on which portion of the swing you hit on, you may not get Max Might. However, on every single charge attack except for the level 2 brutal upswing, all of your motion value is loaded into the second or third hits of the attacks. This means that the majority of your damage is still getting max might, meaning max deeps. Now, this does assume that you have decent stamina management, but properly managing stamina is part of mastering Hammer's toolkit. It's a necessary skill to develop if you wish to master bonking heads. Besides, even if you have terrible stamina management, you still get max might on big bang and golf swing combos, which are your biggest hitting moves. And besides, there aren't really any better skills we can replace it with. Alright, let's get to the builds. As always, our build cards are shown with the standard raw attack buffs enabled. Link to our video on the standard raw attack buffs in the top right if you would like to learn why we use these. First up, we have the Diablo Shatterer builds. We have two builds here, the Recommended build and the Speedrunner build. Let's start with the Recommended build. This set hits 573.8 EFR, which is a lot of damage. Unsurprisingly, to get this you'll need the Metahemoth set. This means it runs 100% affinity with Master's Touch and gives you effectively infinite sharpness. So what's the catch? Unfortunately, you have to run 3 max might to hit 100% affinity. So that means if you don't have good stamina management, you will start to lose sharpness. And with only 10 hits of white, you're likely to drop into blue. And those big EFR numbers we were talking about earlier? Well, dropping into blue will decimate those. Which is exactly why we run a third level of max might here instead of slotting in a crit boost deco which does increase the EFR. Simply put, unless you play perfectly, 90% affinity with 2 max might reliance is not enough to maintain white sharpness during a hunt. And this is going to be the highest EFR set, otherwise that hits 100% affinity and lets you run a health augment. Besides, if you are going to be able to play extremely cleanly and perfectly anyway, you don't need the health augment, in which case you should be using our speedrunner build. So this build hits a juicy 586.56 EFR. This is roughly a 2.2% increase over the health augment build, but it also happens to have the highest EFR out of any meta set at the moment. Combine that with Hammer's insanely high motion value per second combos and you have an excellent recipe for monster paste. The set itself doesn't actually change from the previous ones, only the augments and decos do. Basically, it trades the health augment and 5% affinity for a level of crit boost, bumping up its damage even more. 
95% affinity is enough to not hit blue as long as you play very cleanly. Which is why we call this the speedrunner build, because it will ultimately do more damage in a clean run. And that 2.2% damage increase is enough to make certain fights more scriptable, which is very important for a speedrun. However, if the 95% affinity makes you end up hitting blue during a hunt versus not hitting blue with the 100% affinity build previously, the previous build will win. Now, if you really want to min-max this to the absolute peak, then trading the second affinity augment for an attack augment will put you at 587.93 EFR. This is a whopping 1.37 EFR gain. And as we mentioned earlier, 90% affinity really isn't enough, so be prepared to abandon a lot of quests due to bad crit RNG. Now, if you're going to play the Diablo's Hammer in multiplayer, you're going to need flinch free. Without it, your teammates are going to interrupt your combos and make you lose power charge due to flinching you, which is a big no-no. Your best option is to sacrifice that crit boost or max might deco we talked about earlier for the flinch free deco. Unfortunately, this does make the speedrunner build lose the 3 crit boost that gives it such a nice EFR advantage, and also makes the health augment build run 90% affinity. But everything else on the build is more important than a last level of max might. So unfortunately, this is the best that Diablo's hammer can do. Alright, next up we have my personal favorite, the KD Sleep Hammer. Because this is a peak performance build, health augment is mandatory. And with that peak active, this set hits a BEA beautiful 576.58 EFR, which is 2.78 EFR higher than the Health Augment Blows Hammer. Very nice. However, this is with peak performance active. If you lose peak performance, it loses 36.96 EFR, dropping it down to 539.62 EFR. Not that nice. Of course, with how insanely high the motion values are on Hammer, you can get that health back in a single hit or combo, but still something to consider. So now the question is, why use the Sleep Hammer instead of the Blows Hammer if it is going to be hitting less EFR on average? Well, that's because it has a super comfy 40 hits of natural white sharpness. That's four times the amount of sharpness that the Blows Hammer sets have. So if you aren't skilled at managing stamina, hitting weak points, or in a matchup where you don't aim for weak points, this is the hammer for you. Unlike the Blows Hammer, the Sleep Hammer doesn't demand you to play super clean in order to maintain white sharpness. In fact, it's a struggle to even get it into blue sharpness. In addition to this, when in blue sharpness, the Health Augment Blows Hammer hits 521.64 EFR and the Speedrunner Blows Hammer hits 533.23. This means that the White Sharpness Sleep Hammer without Peak Active actually hits harder than both Diablo's Hammers when they hit Blue Sharpness. The Sleep Hammer is also by far the best option for multiplayer Hammer. It is much harder to maintain both Max Might and Weakness Exploit uptime in multiplayer. Having 4 times the White Sharpness as well as less Max Might Reliance helps a lot with that. On top of that, you only lose one level of peak to run the mandatory level of flinch free, dropping the EFR with peak active to 558.1, which is not a huge drop. Now in regards to Slugger, you'll notice none of these sets have Slugger. That's because KO thresholds, like any other status threshold, scale with each subsequent KO. That means you'll need to hit the monster exponentially more times every time you want a KO. In practice, because of the high damage output of the hammer and the exponential hit required, you'll typically only get two KOs, with the monster being dead long before you get the third, even with Slugger 3. So what this means is you don't get any extra KOs with Slugger 3, you just get the ones you do get faster. Which is the exact reason why you still sometimes see speedrunners use Slugger 3. This is because by increasing their KO damage, they can script certain runs better. When I say script, that means they can make certain portions of the fight extremely scripted. This increased KO damage will in certain situations allow them to chain trips and KOs back to back with the monster having no uptime. But these are niche strats at best, Slugger is otherwise a waste of skill points. Alright, that about does it guys. As always, thank you for watching the video. And let us know which weapon you'd like to see us do next in the comments. If you're looking for more help or just need somebody to hunt with, check out our Discord, the Mathalos Nest. 
we have a very active community of both PC and console players looking to group up. You can also follow us on Twitter where we post updates and notifications whenever we're working on new things. You can check me out on Twitch where I stream Monster Hunter and other games almost every day. Shout out to Honey at Honey Hunter's World for providing the tools we use to make the sets, and a huge thank you to our patrons, Ken, Jake, Lightweight, Severind, Robin, Skylar, Ven, and Broken Leah. Your gracious donations are enabling this channel to run. Thank you. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when our next video goes live. See you all in the next one. Happy hunting, hunters. Bye. Bye.